Hey, Verdi, how are you? I just thought I'd share with you the last few moments before this print is ready because you can see... Hi, Sam, how's it going? You can see it's been going for over four hours and ten. ZX, did you print this? I literally just designed this today. Did you get it off my Discord? Because this is the first print. I have to print the bottom of it to see if it fits. I decided to model something very similar to the... Quick Joy joystick. Um, it's not quite the same. I kept a few differences in the shape, but overall it's the same size. Oh, the one on Thingiverse. So ZX, this is this is fresh. I wanted a very clean, fresh model because if you recall, I've got a load of joystick knobs to get rid of. So I'll try making my own. See how that goes. 3D printing is definitely for the faint of heart. Look at this thing here. It's going, it's winding. Unfortunately, I wanted to do the bottom at the same time, but little Bob is uh, not doing well at the moment. It's got a little bit of a problem, so I'm gonna change the firmware out on little Bob. So otherwise, I could have had little Bob and big Dave going at the same time doing the top and the bottom. We'll slam that clamshell together. Oh, I say it's not really a clamshell, is it? Um, paint drying. No, look, Kevin. 98%. We're almost there. It's almost there. We're just waiting for it. <laughs> I have to say I'm quite excited though because although I've made a number of joysticks, in fact, this is kind of cool because it's one of the few times actually that I can show you round. Do, 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 do. Fuses. <laughs> Your printer is just finished. Well, mine's still going, unfortunately. Where's some of the joysticks we made? Look, there we go. That's my Elite Dangerous joystick right there. And uh, of course the joystick tester and there's an Atari stick I hacked to be USB in here. But I want to show you something else, which is today's project while I'm here. I can still hear the print again. Don't worry, won't miss it. But what I wanted to do, it's a charging. Hello, look, you can see me in the reflection, is show you this. I'm going to boot it up. So basically, I made this out of scraps today because somebody told me that they were having an issue with their garage door remote not working. So I thought, OK, I need to get a signal analyzer over there. And I had, hey, floating fat man, how's it going? Um, I had some scraps. So I had this case uh, going free, basically. I had a, this Raspberry Pi because I've got, you can see here, I've got a bunch of them that I've printed cases for and then thrown them onto the shelf of shame. Look, they're all the kits that we, we make, Sling there, and my Game Cubes. All the Game Cubes, all the Nintendo 64s. We've got a lot of stuff here. So what this does, though, this boots straight up into a frequency um, analysis. It's basically showing you what's going on the SDR. And what you can do, of course, is remove the antenna. But just to make sure, I put a nice wadge of metal in there. I didn't weld it up specifically. It's something I welded up for something else, but it happened to fit in the case. So I can put the antenna in there. As you can see here, we've got a little peak going on. And what I did is this was made for an Adafruit thing, but I managed to uh, basically hack the software enough to make it work on the hardware that I happen to have. So I, I promise you, this literally was just scrap uh, stuff lying around. So we have this, I think it's a nine inch, it's quite big, maybe it's a seven inch touch screen. And uh, this flat flexi ribbon cable thing is really nice. That's a flat HDMI. And then this power does the backlight and the touch. And in here, we've got the dongle for the TV tuner thing, the SDR. And then a battery that I had, a power bank, which I've had for years. And it's really cool that I've actually been able to give it a purpose. because It's just lying around and I've not needed power banks for a long time. They don't really work to charge your phone anymore because they're not juicy enough. So what this does anyway is you've got two modes of operation. You've got this standard mode, and then if you hit switch mode, you get the traditional waterfall effect going up there. And you can see the frequencies down below. So this is 89, 90, 91. So if you go into config, you can actually change what center frequency you want. So you can clear that. And I'm going to say one. I've got something running on 105, but I don't think it's going to pick up in here. We have a lot of interference in the back office. Believe it or not, the uh, back office has a hell of a lot of um, interference and hum. So I don't think we're going to do it, but maybe. I'm just trying to, trying to 
get this antenna out one hand. What would be nice on here is obviously you have an SMA antenna too, so you can plug it into an external box. But I think that's pretty cute though, right? Look, it all folds down. You unplug the power here. You might put a power switch down there. Shut it up. <laughs> Take it away. And it's quite heavy though, of course. It's not like, it's, I'd say it's probably lighter than a laptop, but certainly it's not heavy. Um, back office machines all turned off. They're having a, a well earned rest. And of course, there's my knob end that I've designed that whole arrangement for. So let's go back to see where we are, of course. 99%, we're almost there. Hooray! Now, I don't get, it's weird, the chat things just pop up, by the way, and disappear off, so I don't get to see them all the time. So um, please feel free to, you know, chat. And if I don't answer you, just give a shout out. Let's just check there's a laptop still on. Yeah, we've got... Got a lot of hardware sitting around here. This is uh, this is where we, of course, play um, scratch with the micro bits. So kids using that sort of stuff right now. And under wraps is the Neo Neo Geo. So we're gonna you can see there's a lot of crap in here though. I don't really get to uh, play on stuff these days. Hey John, how's it going? Floating fat man up since four. Oh, you want to get to bed there? Look. There's always toys. Look behind the 3D printer. <laughs> oh, there's, there's too much stuff. Honestly, there's too much stuff in here. I've got to start throwing out some things and sorting it out. And we've got, I've got way too many of these things. Look, the VTEC V smiles. Uh, nobody's, nobody wants to use uh, a VTEC V smile anymore. But, you know, we've got them. And I've got here the uh, BBC Micro floppy drive that I need to try out. And a little MIDI keyboard that I've the power supply for so i'm not very pleased with that come on what else 99 come on we're almost there this has got to be the last pass surely uh something i've been considering doing there as a winter project while i've been here of course is to do something with that so that's the uh lawn mower and you have to bring it in every winter and i always think once it's in it would be nice to trick it up somehow do some mods to it um but you know I, I'd quite like to Wi-Fi it up, but it might be too much of a, a bunch. Oh, you've got... Did, I didn't even know Bandai did versions of the VTech laptop. Sorry, I just went quiet. Because I'm just looking. Ah, OK, here we go. I wanted to show you. I've got mouse mats. Check this out. And I'm... I'm, I'm loving these, by the way. These are some mouse mats that are very slick indeed. Look, check those out. There's a chap on eBay. It's an expensive way to buy them, by the way, if you just get them printed on off. But um, look at that. Isn't that cute? Because I'm using mouse mats all the time. And I, I want to upgrade from my uh, this Dell thing. <laughs> Although, to be fair to the Dell mouse mat, it's actually pretty nice. It's got that hard plastic on it. But check this one out. This one is freaky when, it, oh, when it's not wrapped up because this actually looks 3D when you're looking at it. You're like, okay. So you could have your very own back office board. Flame lid, you got one, didn't you? Derek, you got one. What one did you get, by the way? Was it the blue or the, um, the wood colored? I think that... Um, I might, I'm keeping these as prizes right now. I think it's really cool. I mean, if we had shows, we don't have shows anymore, but if we had shows to go to, I would definitely be giving that out to people like we used to uh, share, share the wares, as it were. Um, but I don't know if you know, I actually made a boo-boo. I don't know if um, Sad Ken is uh, online. I don't think he's, he's in here right now. But yeah, I actually sent his prize to the wrong address and it's got lost in the system. So <laughs> we've got um, quite a nice prize there that's just evaporated into nothingness. So I'm not too pleased about that, but stuff happens. It's been, there's been a few things like that this week where I've made cock-ups and just basically had to write off things. I don't, I don't like it, but you've got to move on sometimes, right? Live and learn. Check the address. Yeah, he's very sad, Ken, indeed. <laughs> Crit Hunter says, if you potty train those mice already, you wouldn't have to keep buying mats. I agree, but I, I'm used to using those old mice and I, I don't like, 
I don't like having to tell them off. So, you know, if they... My sons, fortunately, as we know, are incontinent, so we just have to let them uh, let them do it where they want to do it. <laughs> it's something that you might think is a bit cute, actually. Something we've not looked at before, but check out this shelf. So this is just a, a regular shelf here. But is it? It's actually got Bluetooth. It's a Bluetooth shelf, but never been used. And the reason I bought it is I saw it in, like, Wilco or something like that, and it was there for 15 quid, and I was like, oh, i got to have that. Yeah, but I'm always thinking I should just remove this and, and bring it, give it to the kids or something, because it's just totally wasted. Do you have any furniture that has technology in it that really doesn't need the tech? 41 Manchester United Kingdom. <laughs> ZX Renew, that's terrible. That doesn't, um, didn't they pay PayPal or something? Doesn't it automatically take their address or? That's always, I think, the beauty of those systems, right? Because um, if you've got them integrated with PayPal, at least it should have some sort of address. But you're pretty, you're right here, because I think a lot of people send stuff out. We don't really check the addresses, do we? Um, oh, now, here we go. So you can see the head is slightly moving away. I might have to put the phone down, actually, while I do this. I'm going to see if I can perch it on something. Um, not that. That's a moving thing. Let's see if I can do it one-handed, but I suspect that would be a mistake. Oh, here it goes. It's coming. Oh. I've got a, I've got a jam. Ah, okay. So while that is doing that, let me just tell this machine. So that was 4 hours 22. Print from SD. Oh, I didn't put the bottom on it. Oh, what? Let me get the SD card out. We'll have to put the bottom on it. Let's bring that indoors <laughs> while we're waiting. That's no good, is it? Right. I'll let you have a look at that while I turn on my computer. I literally, I, I really shut down my computer, but this is the one time I actually shut it down properly. But have a look at that infill. That is going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm just tapping away on my computer to log in. And I'm just going to open... Oh, God, I got... Do I have to open Fusion for this? Oh, just Cura. Just Cura. Hang on a second. Let me get Cura up. I'm trying to do two things at once. The reason I want to get it going again, you see, is because I want to make sure I get it kicked off before I go to bed. Floating Fat Man. I don't know. I think it might hurt my hand. But remember, this is just a V1. So, ah... The reason, the reason for this is that I want to test the fit of my knob in there. So I'm going to take that metal plate off. You see those four screws? Hopefully all of that will just align. That's the idea. Um, I'm just going to, you know what, spot the other one for now. It's, it's pointless. Now, let me see if I can just remove the camera. Oh, don't drop it. Put this over there, the camera table. Okay. And, whoa, hello. Sorry. Now, I'm not going to be able to see what you're uh, saying if you're typing to me right now because I'm going to perch that. Look at that. That fits pretty well. Let's get the lights. There we go. Back office live. This is the. This is a first. I almost wish I tidied the desk up now. I've got a big lead acid battery there leaking all over the place. Right. Right, let's do this. Now, I wasn't intending a proper stream today, but oh, we're going to do that. Now, is your picture flickering, by the way? I don't know if I need to knock the light off. So tell me, light off or light on? Tell me which works. Oh, my word. Light off. Okay, light off. Sorry. Let's do this. It's coming. It's let's go. Off, 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 off. Getting flashbacks. Getting flashbacks from my day as a Chippendale. Or is it a Dream Boy now? It's the Dream Boys, I think. 
I was speaking to a bouncer friend of mine who uh, did the Dream Boy gigs. And I, what is it like? You know, what, what, how do you describe the ladies who go to those things? Slags. <laughs> get them off. Get them off. Right. Okay. Good. So that was that bit done. So let's get the other part. One minute. Although I have to say a minute would be a long wait. Can I zoom? No. Just seeing if I can. No. Yeah. No. You can zoom. Look. You can zoom. This is how Big Clive must do it. So let's get your knob end off. Okay. Right, we need a screwdriver. This is exciting, isn't it? Now, oh yeah, before I go on, look, look at this. That is how my retro net case turned out, by the way. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And this is the second version. The first version fit perfectly, but the second version I modified slightly because I wanted a, a bigger hole here so for a reset button. And uh, just to get it clipping down here very ever so slightly better. But that's bloody good. It's, it is lovely. And you're right, Flame, it is lovely. And when this is printed in the grey, um, it um, just looks like just factory fit on the Atari ST. So finally, I'm ever so pleased that I can finally hit the head on the story. Hit the, hit the head on the story? Close the chapter on the RetroNet V4 because that was a, a, a project that started off during COVID. Um, a lot of hiccups and stress along the way uh, because of parts. We had that initial lot of fake chips that cocked up everything. You know, really, it's a labour of love, these things. It's, it's, um, it's been very painful, but it's nice to be able to just maybe print, print some pack cases and go and give them to some people at last. Right, pop that off. Now, I never really know which way is up and down. It doesn't really matter on these. It depends how you wire them. But I suppose if you had a cable set here that went to a USB or a Atari-style D9 connector, you probably would have a problem. Now, this is... Oh, oh no! Oh, I have to move some stuff around internally. Look. I've got uh, some features here that I don't want there. Yeah, I didn't account for those. That's okay. It's all right right now though, because I can modify the board. So I'm just going to take a bite. Chomp, 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 chomp. Boom. That's the way they do it in the factory. So what else is stopping us? Oh, look, because we have these two flangy pange, pange flangy pangies. Let's can we nibble them off? Oh, bear with me. They're a bit too much. Do, do, do. This is kind of how I really work, by the way. Obviously, in the videos, we just do a few things. Um, the V3 retro net, Kevin. Um, I'm trying to think. You have the extremely rare. V yeah, the V3 is the, the rarest of the bunch. Um, I don't even have one. I think the only other one in existence it, uh, is with Asnova. So that is um, a very much a rarity, and there's a very there's a story behind the V3 too. So don't remind me about it, please. Don't remind me of the pain. And of course, we still have the inspiration engine to finish too. The guilt. I've got a lot of guilt over that one. I want that one done too. Ah, okay. Ooh, here we go. That's one. These mounts are interesting, actually. I don't remember them on other joysticks, but I'm sure they must have been there. They're nothing to do with the plate that this came with, so I just guess they're different mounting uh, systems. Uh, yeah. That's it. We got the swing going. Right. Pile all the tools up. That's the way you do it. Keep piling the tools up till you can't move anymore. And then when you've had enough, go inside. Never cup of tea. 
Oh, that's good. Oh, that, that, that noise, by the way, was because I haven't cleaned. There's one tiniest bit of infill still in there. It was just getting it to bite a little bit too much. Let's get that out. Did, did, I reckon you could get a whole Raspberry Pi in here, you know. I know we haven't printed the base yet, but look how much room you've got. The base is going to be out to here. Right, screw holes, screw holes. I have to say, I'm very pleased with my CAD work now on the old Fusion 360 these days. Uh, Critter Hunter, uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, yeah, um, this will work with anything, really. It depends what board you want. So if you've got a, a, a base, basic Atari cable set, a regular one of the DE9, you should be able to wallop that straight on. But if you've got, um, of course, the USB expand. Oh, look at that. That was nice. I kind of overcranked that one a bit, but they are they are actually are countersunk. I did design these with a countersunk. Mr. Agony. Um, I think that, uh, I don't know. I might share the design. I'll have to work it out yet. I would like to get rid of a number of joystick knob ends I've got first. So I might do a bunch of them first. Um, that come with that, right? Just to get rid of that lot. Otherwise, you'll be going off making your own and I won't be able to shift what I've got. And then after that, I don't care. So yeah, you could probably have the design. Why not? But like um, like Peter just said uh, earlier, there is um, on Thingiverse probably some designs too. Oh my word. This is so bloody good. Look at that. I tell you what. What's that smell? Oh. So there's a big waft of ozone in here, like a massive amount of ozone. Hang on. It's okay. It's just something electrostatically discharging in the back office. That's it. That that I didn't think you could 3D print a joystick, but that is rigid as hell. Top banana. Look at that. I am. I can't wait for the bottom to print. That does the job. That actually does the job. So if you want to wire them up, they're really easy. You've got a common uh, ground on this PCB that's already going around. So sometimes you see them with wires, yeah? That's annoying. So these ones are all pre-wired, pre as it were, because they're on actually a, a circuit board. So if you look here, though, you've just got five pins. One is a common, and then you've just got the switch on each one. So it's super easy to wire up to whatever you want, really. And these are the... Uh, <laughs> if I can get it off. These are those restrictor plates. In fact, this is holding everything together, but you've seen other joysticks where you can remove these or rotate them and that locks them in different positions. But this one allows you to do diagonals where I think that's the main restriction, isn't it? Where you can't do a diagonal on them. I've got some buttons coming. So that's something you need to fit. And look at that, we've got the little hole there. Now I'll have a quick look. I might have some buttons somewhere. Give us a sec again. Ouch. No. The sound, the sound you hear in the background is a lot of stuff falling around. Okay, so, by the way, that's what a USB... Oh yeah, hang on, let's have a look at that. Unfortunately, there aren't any buttons. That's the downside, but fortunately, there is something else. So, let's have a look here. So that's a USB lead, and this is a, an arcade controller board. And you can see this has given you loads of stuff here. Um, load because you've got lots of buttons on the arcade. You obviously won't need to do that one. Um, oh, that's a really great idea. How do I get the chat back? Damn it! Hang on, let me see if I can live chat. Okay, so Crit Hunter, you'd wire up a micro dip switch to fire button. That would be a really great idea. I think that's a bloody good idea, to be honest with you. Um, Unfortunately, I can't sh test this until we get the base done, but let us I think that's going to be snug. It might have to be a more custom um, custom fit for that. But honestly, I re really would never have believed in a million years that you could 3D print something rigid enough to actually be a joystick, um, albeit a slightly painful one with these, these edges right now. I'm going to get into my CAD and champ for those off. If you look at the original joysticks, actually, they're rounded here and they come through and they're rounded here on the bottom as well. 
I, I don't think this is ever going to get stuck, to be honest with you. I think it's all right. I wouldn't worry about it, to be honest with you. Um, and that screw at the bottom, if you've ever wondered what the screw for at the bottom of one of those, because there's nothing to unscrew, is to tighten your knob end. So that's a good opportunity when you've got it apart to do that. Now, it's not going anywhere. So is there anything else I can show you guys before I uh, mess around on my computer and print the last last bits there? By the way, I might have to just redesign this feature here a little bit based on the locking mechanism when the buttons come in. But there is a lip. I've done a little lip around. You can see it there. See the lip? But to be honest with you, if you're making your own joystick, I don't think you have any problem just setting them in glue. I don't, you, they don't need to be that serviceable. You're not going to break them. Um, I feel there was something I wanted to show you guys somewhere, but oh, I can't remember what it is. There's too much stuff, basically, when I start rooting around the shelves here. Um, I thought I found another prize, though, for next time we have another competition. This is kind of cool. This is um, pretty old technology now, but this is called an Arietta G25, and this is a Linux board with a Wi-Fi modem on top. And there's not really... Um, all sorts you could do with these but if you just want something like literally it's a bit like a raspberry pi now you know raspberry pis have, have taken the market where this thing existed long before you had that little raspberry pi uh, but you could yeah if you want a micro server running in your house um you can just just literally just put the usb on that and stick it in a box you don't have to do anything but this is kind of cute because it's so uh teeny it came with a separate serial port so this is a serial port adapter for it and that's, of course, the USB serial transceiver. So you can talk to it. So there you go. So much stuff, honestly. I mean, OK, let's show you some stuff that you probably don't normally get to see. So that's where my camera normally sits. And then I'm working on whatever I'm working on. And you can see it. it is an absolute mess. I am working on stuff all the time. That was today's project, of course. And we're working on this now. Um, and then beyond that now, so I actually do genuinely use these soldering irons. I have people sort of going on to me, oh, you don't use the stuff, you know, paying you to do it. Literally, nobody's paying me to do anything here. Anyway, um, and then I've got my old project boxes. So these are from old projects there that I don't really, uh, every time I do a project, you see, it lives in a box with all of its bill of materials. And there's lots here. And there's even more out there. You can see them. Every box is a project. Um, and some behind the green curtain. It's a bit like Wizard of Oz. And um, what I tend to do is I, I still keep the project boxes and everything's lovely and sorted. I think Rob, if he's still here, he's seen, he's seen those. Every compartment in the lid is written on what is in there because when I want to build something, it's it's very quick. It's definitely not heaven, Sam, I can tell you. Um, and I keep digging into there. There's really useful components in there when I'm scratching around down here, like with you guys. Um, and the most useful box is this one. And I'll tell you why. And I can show you in the lid, through the lid, because it's the one that contains all of the five volt regulators. So many. Yeah, Mr. Agony, it does. Yeah, messy. I think you're right. Heaven is messy. Um, I am working on some other projects, actually, by the way. Um, of course, there's the ZX81 we were working on. There's a bottle of whiskey I plan on tacking at some point, maybe Christmas. Um, is I've I've got a new board coming for this to convert Famicoms into PAL. Hey, I just noticed something. Look, we have some buttons. It can probably get some buttons. And this was going to be given out as a prize. <laughs> just haven't got around to it. We've got so many things here. Now, let's see if we can... Pack we... Oh, that's handy. Let's do that. Turn that out. Undo the oh, this is nice, isn't it? This is a whole hang on, look, that's the same kind of joystick as well, right? So, we got a pink button, a pink button will do. Oh, they're all popping out. I'm gonna put you down for a sec, hang on. Here we go. Now, this is how the benches get messy, right? <laughs> oh, come on, why is it so difficult? I hate when they do this. It was like this in the Arcader as well. It's over the top. That's what I call it. Over the bloody top. <coughs> uh oh. Okay. Let's get the other one. 
Uh. Okay, fine. By the way, that's where I got my Raspberry Pi out of and the screen. So we don't need that anymore. Okay. Oh, that's tight. Look at that. Hang on a minute. What size are these supposed to be? I definitely made these holes big enough. Give us a sec. If I die before I wake, at least in heaven I can skate. I can't remember which one of you lovely people sent this in to me, but it's really useful. Ah, shit. No! That's sharp. All right. Be more careful with that. I didn't know you. I didn't think you could actually cut yourself with that tool. Right, let's get this in. That's better. Oh, ho, 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 ho. he's too damn good. He's too damn good. I'm so chuffed with myself. I cannot believe it. How does this stuff work? I literally, I tell you what, I was at my desk with just a damn ruler. I did all this with a damn ruler. Look at that. That is craziness. Right. I'm going to limp on. I got. I feel like I've got to get me other buttons on. Holy smoke! I'm going to have this joystick made tomorrow after my like ten-hour print. Let, right, ready? Here it goes. I wish my mum would stop tweeting me. Look at this! It's locking in. Andrew knows how to design stuff. Oh my word! And this has not got the same features as the Quick Joy. Booyah! This is how you do it. Look at that fit. Look at that fit, you MFers. That is how you want it to be. Mm. <laughs> oh my word! I don't. These are leaf spring. Uh, I suppose I could live with leaf springs. <laughs> that is so cool. It's got blood on it now. <laughs> I'm going to do a contest. I think. I think one of you guys is going to win this with my blood on it. <laughs> He's got my blood. A big pink Clive joystick a pink one with the pink buttons the pink pushers i need a pink knob though for it right i'm not sure of this color scheme oh hang on i can change it though i can change i tell you what how productive i have been today all right let's get that off can you stop bloody family that noise, every time it goes, but I'm moving. I'm presuming you can hear it as well. That's them WhatsApping each other. Okay. That is spot on. I think that could do better. I don't know. Ah, oh, it seems a bit more boring, doesn't it now? I think if you're gonna go for the retro look, you probably do need the red ball though. I think that's something we're gonna have to do. <laughs> Sam, nobody is safe. Well, I could, now he's got the wiring loom sitting here doing nothing. Um, no, I think we're gonna we're jumping the gun if we do that. I know, I know it'd be nice to wire it up, but without the base, the base is the real where the real deal happens, isn't it? Because. This is where you're going to see if all of my features for the actual screwing mechanism actually clamp up, and they will. The only thing that I do need to do on the design, the final bit, which I want to do after this fit and finish, so before the next level of this design, is what you do is you put on the edge, imagine this, like a little lip that goes around like that, so that when the two halves lock in, they don't slide about. But you don't really have that same issue with 3D printing versus the sort of ABS or polycarb uh, joysticks that you normally have because it's super rigid. So it does not going to have that. But what could be cute as well, I'm wondering if there's like a little plastic strip that I could put in you like a go faster. So a different bit of material, maybe like a bit of a, a soft rubber in there. No, I don't think so. I'm going to make one of these and that'll be that. I'll be bored. That's that's my problem, actually. I think you've noticed that problem. I get bored quickly. Um, 
So I think that is that's going to be pretty good. So, so tell me now in the chat, give me some ideas of what we want to do. And I'm going to get a pen out. I'm going to get me pen out, and we're going to write down these ideas. Hang on, what's this? Um, okay, we can write it on this bit of paper. So, <clears throat> so we need a pink version. And we need a instructions at least for how to make them USB or Atari. So can you please just go away? How do I silence you WhatsApp forever? Um, yeah, yeah, the ergonomics for sure. I'm definitely going to adjust the ergonomics. And I'm going to I'm going to do that after I've assembled it, though, because I, I think you need to hold it a little bit. I mean, at the moment, that feels super sharp, right? It's digging in. But then at the same time, it doesn't actually have the base part on it as well. But I think it will benefit from curves on that. If you're going to do that, you could follow them around like that. I don't know if there's a like a statute of limitations on designs. I don't really want to copy the quick joy totally. But yes, you could copy it. You just remove those components there. Yeah, Kevin, that's the problem, isn't it? Finishing a project. That is the problem. I guess at least with this sort of 3D printed stuff, it's neat. I mean, I think we can definitely class these as this one 100% finished now, which is nice. And this one will soon be finished, won't it, really? And what's really cute about this, what I, I love all my you know joysticks and input mechanisms. I can actually modify this. So let's say, for example, I do want to put some sort of switchable auto fire features with some sort of pots here. Um, we could fit, say, even these. If it's something you don't want to adjust that often, we could put a little PCB in there with little adjusters, put them on the bottom, something like that. Hey, Costado, evening. Evening. Um, so pink version, USB, Atari, ergonomics at the bottom. Um, I like the um, second fire button. Second fire button up. We'll put that. And I think if you have the um, second fire button up, you want to maybe have a disable up option as well. So that you don't accidentally jump. So I think that's kind of what we want. Sucker feet. Pink mouse. Do we really need those damn sucker feet? I mean, do we? Did you, did you ever really use it? I'm going to put it in quotes. Sucker feet. But I'm more, I'm happier normally. Where's my feet? Oh, I'm running out of feet. I like these feet from CPC. So I like these little guys. So just some really, these are really rubbery. So you can just like, they don't move around when it's on the table, but they're definitely not suckers. No sucker feet, they never stick. Well, the ones on the arcade are stuck. I didn't even have to put a load of sputum on it. They just worked right away. I should say every time it dings like that, and instead of it's just my parents and stuff talking on WhatsApp, what I should go is like, oh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, tip. Thank you for the Patreon. <laughs> thank you for the subscribe. Two stick shooters. Oh, but Geiger Punk, think about it now. If we're going to do a two stick shooter, why don't I make a double whammy? Arrgh! Now, who's up for that? That now might be an interesting kit, right? If I'm going to just give it, and then say kit, it's just a kit of parts. I'm not building these damn things. You're just getting a box full of stuff. And if you break it, you broke it. You're not sending it back to me. If you break the 3D printed shell, you have to 3D print another one. Um, <laughs> we're good. But why don't we do a double stick in that? That would be crazy good. I like that idea. Okay, I think in that case, you could fit this, the suckery feet. But then you've got the options here. Why don't you just drill out the bottom yourself? You don't really need... Um, you really don't need the um, doodads, do you? you if uh, it to be fitted with sucker feet, you can just drill them out yourself. Or if you really wanted, I could put dimples on it so that you could drill them out and pop them in yourself. But where can you buy sucker feet? Where was the last time anybody actually saw any sucker feet? Show me your feet, sucker. We can add alternate technologies in there. <laughs> Sam, when you were licking your sucker feet, right, 
I'm just thinking about it. Think of all the other like like your your mates around and all that. Everybody was licking on them, right? Isn't it? There was a lot of licking going on, and a lot of exchange of viruses. I bet in uh, coronavirus times now, you would nef definitely not want to be licking on anyone's suck feet for sure. <laughs> that sounds almost like a bloody uh, fetish thing, the sucker feet. So that's neat anyway. Uh, st strong magnets, yeah, I suppose you could, and have a metal desk. I've got some magnets here somewhere. Yeah, those sort of guys, those little ones. I mean, they're pretty strong, aren't they? Um... Oh, yeah, one massive one from a mobile phone thing for your car, mm, like a GPS mount. I quite like the magnetic GPS mounts, but I think they wouldn't quite give you what you need for this. I'm wondering what you could build in this, though. I'm thinking you could actually just put your whole Raspberry Pi. Bear with me a second. God, what a mess I'm going to have to clear up tomorrow. Right, so if we take this is the... Raspberry Pi from the BBC Micro thing. I mean, look. I'm thinking, right? You've got good possibility of being able to get something like that in there. Absolutely. Now I'm looking at that. You almost definitely can. You almost definitely can. I'm I'm 90% sure. How about that? I'm 90% sure you could. Even if you, if you don't put that pin header on, especially... You could just get that in there. In fact, if you look at those joystick knobbers, if I could, if I could turn back time. Oh, what does that mean? Did I win something on eBay? Is that how you take them out? No. Basically, look, what I'm saying is, you see those pins there, yeah? If I had fitted them the other way round, yeah? So I could possibly go in and rotate these. Um, the other way around, that PCB looks to me like it would actually even fit in between the pins. Might be a bit tight on that SD card, but yeah, you know, what I'm saying is you could definitely fit it in, right? You can definitely fit it in. So that's pretty cool. Making your own, I don't know what you'd call it, like your own TV game thing with an HDMI white wire coming out of it. I mean, that's all you'd need. Right, I'm going to put that over there so I don't lose it. That's quite a good thing. Um, what else? Well, you could if you wanted to. Three. Oh, who did that? Who sent me the 99p? That's so cute. Thank you. Kevin, thank you. Da ding cha ching You just watched a video about a mouse? A, a phone? What? Stay. Chat. Don't go away. Why does the chat leave me? Why did you leave me? Okay, I can scroll through the chat apparently. Uh, so Flank Fat Man says, Raspberry, make it switchable USB for PC use. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, NCOT Technology says, I just watched a video about a mouse with a phone in it. That would be most unuseful. Kevin sends me 99p with a picture of a burger. I'm definitely going to use that against my McDonald's burgers next time. And Sam M says, I'm still here and so are my mates, despite having a good go on my champ Champion Pro. I'm not even sure what that means, but it sounds rude. <laughs> right, guys. Well, if there's nothing else I can show you... I could probably do with getting some sleep. So you got the last, these are the, the vinegar strokes of the stream. Oh yeah, I suppose I still do actually have to do a bit of work on the PC. Um, da -dum. Oh, already seeing you as an extra new. Bye, bye. That's fine. You go. I've had enough of you. I'm, I'm going, Angie. Sod yeah. I'm off now. Right. I'm just, um, I've got it shining away from my monitor because I've got work stuff on my monitor and I, I can't be bothered to do the whole shutting down all the different windows, so bear with me. I'm just going to show you the final process when my PC wakes up uh, of doing the thing from Cura. Uh, okay. All these bloody monitors. Right, joystick bottom. Bottom. <laughs> right, I'm going to zoom into the screen. Yes, I can show you that. That's fine. It's no work on that monitor. Right, so... How do we do this? So that's the bottom. It's looking all right. That's the top looking all right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say we want support is on already. Yeah. Build plate adhesion is off, which is what we want. We're going to hit slice. It's munching it up. Four hours, 52. Safe to removable. Eject. Right. 
let's take the do, 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 do. the SD card over, pop it in. Glade plugins. And when you're doing this, though, always just wait. Ah, Mr. Agony. Yeah, that's a good point, right? If it's upside down, it's going to take longer and use more infill, isn't it? Mm, let's do that again, shall we? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think we'll get us a better finish. But I think you're right. It's the bottom anyway, so who cares? Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. When you're right, you're right, guys. Fine. <laughs> Let's see. I'm, I'm only doing it for one reason. The only reason I'm doing it is because it might be quicker. <laughs> it might just be quicker. Uh, okay, right. And then I'm just going to... No. And I'm going to say um, arrange all models because that sometimes just sorts it out, fixes problems. Yeah, I think, that, I think you're right. I think that's definitely the best way to do it. Let's slice that. Now, let's see if it's got any benefit over doing it this way. Oh, well, it's not off like an hour. Eject. Boom. It's out again. Oh, that glass. I don't have glass plates anymore. They're a pain in the ass. Right, let's do that. Hello, 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 hello. Someone just joined. It flashed up on the screen and then disappeared off, but welcome. Welcome, Traveller. Right, so. There we go. So while that's heating, though, I'm just going to, for the late joiners, fondle my stick, of course, <clears throat> to show you what we're doing. And we're, we're, playing, we're playing with the bottom at the moment. So when the bottom is done, our stick will be complete. Wouldn't it be cool if 3D printers actually were like the Star Trek thing and you could, when it says like, it says four hours, it just takes four minutes. It would be bloody useful, wouldn't it? But I am loving this. I'm going to do it all in red though. I don't have any red buttons, but I've got red buttons on order. Plenty of red buttons and plenty of knobs for everyone. Replicators, that's it. Replicators. That's the great technology. I had a use of a 3D printer called a replicator. Unfortunately, um, it's gone now. Floating Fat Man, I, I quite like the resin printer, but you wouldn't be able to do something like this with the resin printer. Not um, You'd be able to do it and it'd be super smooth and all of that, but it wouldn't really be the right kind of material for the job because... Unfortunately, at least for me, I never found a, a resin that had a... Um, it's a Sanwar-compatible Geigerpunk. Yes, it's a Sanwar-compatible. So, um, I uh, yeah, I did like the resin, but there was a lot of faffing to it. So it's really amazing for the right things. And you definitely can't get better if you want to finish for model making or small precision parts. But the most of the stuff I do is, is just like this. I mean, I'm going to show you something else I made today, right? I'm, I'm always printing stuff and making stuff. But look. Oh, it's like a grand reveal, actually. Da, 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 da. This is just a bunch of rubbish I used. So, unfortunately, the back office has some drains in it because it's coming from the kitchen. And this is like the washing machine hose. And there was a hole in the wall. That's The dishwasher's on the other side. It's Gorilla glued on, but I 3D printed that. It's about that long. It has an, an inner, smaller inner diameter, and that's got like a centimetre radius lip on there. And I just glue that on. So look, there's like, I do stuff like that. So can you imagine doing stuff like that with a resin printer? It's definitely not going to be worth, worth it. Right. So the reason I'm standing guard, by the way, and I did say I was going to end the stream, but I haven't ended the stream, is that when you were printing stuff, if you haven't 3D printed before, it's always a good idea just to make sure that the first few layers do what you um, expect them to do. Otherwise, you're going to go to bed. Ouch, that's hot now. You're going to go to bed and come back to something that you really weren't looking for. And that would be a big ball of spaghetti. So while that's heating up, look at this filament, by the way. This is the one that's really good for the Atari ST or just general retro use. And I know Atari ST, yeah, it's, it's, it's that kind of grey colour. 
Some of you were asking me last time, what is it? Um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's the same as that. That's the filler print PLA matte, but instead of clay red, it was something like um, ST, ST cray. Uh, Gigapunk, you assume a print is auto leveling? They are auto leveling, so there's a couple of sensors on them. I'll show you on this one while it's this one's dead right now. Uh, so, what you do is you click the probe onto here. You and you have to do it like once. I do it like once a, once a year, twice a year at, the, at best. And then it will go across the board and go dink, 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 all over till it's happy. And uh, you will have a leveled printer. Look, there we go. It's done. It's ready to do. Let's see what's going to happen. Half an hour, Encot. Oh, look. Where's, where's no, there's not much print coming out. Oh, there we go. It started. And I've not got on this print any uh, like rafting or anything. So when you see it not printing the first bit, it's a bit worrying. It's obviously a bit of extrusion issue, but it should be okay. I'm just going to get rid of some of these bigger chunks because when it goes through, it's going to smack that down and that's, that's going to rip up something, I'm sure. Let's see. That little funkiness. I'm worried about that now. Sometimes you don't, you know, you just don't need to worry about it. It's, you're going to freak yourself out unnecessarily. I've seen so many times where, where it's, it does stuff like that that looks like it's going to go wrong, but it's actually okay. It's just fine. Um, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with all these printers, of course. Uh, I've got something over here, which you might have seen on um, an earlier video. Let me turn on some lights. And that was this one. This was my original T8, which I used to use for making uh, plates, panels on uh, equipment. And uh, it modded this, if I can find it, here it is. There's a little modification around the side. Where does it go? Okay, so you see there's a couple of clips there. Those were really cool. So what you do, so when you used to put PCB in here, it, you'd never, it, these don't have auto leveling, by the way, or anything like that. But we could get auto leveling because what I did is I wired into the Arduino on it an extra port on the GPIO. And you clip one of these on the bed somewhere just as a grounding point. And then you clip the other one here on your end of your tool. So if you've got your tool there, like that. And then this would do the same thing. So it would run along your piece of printed circuit board before your circuit board was, was going to be drilled. And it would touch it. And every time it would make an electrical contact between these two, it would register the Z-axis on that. And that would create contour map. So then when it was actually doing the milling, it would, of, of course, deduct or add based on that contour map to whatever its current Z axis required um, height would be. And that would give you your uh, auto level on the actual print, well, effectively print, but the mill side. So, yeah, you can do all sorts of these stuff. And it's all pretty practical stuff, isn't it, at the end of the day? So let's see now. Wash the bed with soapy water. Wash your bed with soapy water, said the captain to the balsam. Um, so, Enco, I, I used to use uh, Gerbil. I think it's called GRBL, but it's called Candle or something now. C might be Candle as in C-A-N-D-L-E or C-N-D-L or something like that. Um, that's what I used to use. Oh, I'm still worried about that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore it. What do you think, guys? Should we just restart the print to give me give myself peace of mind, or should we just ignore it? It's your call. You 3D printed a full-size CNC. Yeah, well, that's a good idea. I mean, half the stuff on these things are 3D printed. You can see all these brackets and stuff like that. I have to admit, it's odd sometimes when you buy something that's got 3D printed. Uh, restart for peace of mind. Okay, Sam. I'm going to go with Sam on that one. I'm with you. Oh. 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 It's not just like stopping it. It's like 
a complete like nope. Okay, let's do this. What am I doing, main? Print from SD. Restart. It should be a bit better now, though, because it's warm. And I'm going to twiddle. Twiddle the knob here and see if I, I'm going to get. Look, see. It's hard to. I can't. I, I can focus on it. Come on, focus. Yeah, there you go. It's cooling down, though, but you can see we had a bit of extrusion there. So I print at 200 degrees on here and I have to keep the bed at 60. So you can see here, actually. And I find that is the appropriate temperature for joystick plastics. <laughs> now, I quite like the idea of doing one in the red, actually. That would be nice for the next one. But that is a really... the. The matte filaments um, are actually quite expensive because they've got, you can see them here, they've got a lot of pigment in them. And the problem you get sometimes with the high pigment filaments is they're less sticky, I find. You know, if you get these translucent or clearish ones, they're really good. Like the best ones I ever had, you like the translucent red and those sorts of colors. But it's, it's, it's horses for courses, really. And by the way, I'm, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm just extruding now by hand while it's heating. It's almost up to full temperature anyway, so it's going to take over because I know I can whip that filament away just as soon as it's going to get to where it needs to be. Just like that. Lob it on the floor for the cat to eat. Yeah, so Crit Hunter, I think I'll print one grey because it will match the ST. I might even put an ST logo on it. I do need, I do like the idea of putting a, a recess on it for one of my little labels. That would be cute. But I think that might go on the base, although it could go here, couldn't it? So I might just mill out a little square there if that looks to be. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Oh, hang on. If I'm not mistaken as well, my labels are the same size as a, a PC, um, a PC badge. So you put your old you know, Packard Bell <laughs> Pentium logo in there if you want. Come on now, I've got to go to bed. So it did, it did, it did lay out. It tries to lay the, the circles first. That's what it was doing. That's why it was a bit funky. That's better. Still got a bit of cat's whiskers going on. See, that's the problem. If we had that upside down, if we had it upside down, we wouldn't have to worry about that. Just purely because the nozzles would be so busy uh, printing loads of support material, you see, it wouldn't be messing on this. This is this is a detail component we're printing now on the first layer. And the one thing you get issue with lock printers, even with the self-calibration, on the first layer, it can still be a bit of a, a weird gap. So you can see it's coming out quite flat. So that means the z-axis is probably still a little bit tight. And you remember, it's it's calibrates all the way up there, right? So it goes all the way up there to calibrate. And then when it goes all the way back down, it's it's basically all from math and belt tension at that point. So to be honest, it's amazing that they are as good as they are. But say that first layer, I think it's going to be OK. We're all going to be OK. So stay tuned to the Discord tomorrow. I'll post the results of this tomorrow, the, the whole print. I might I might do a bit on um, Twitter, but it's not my thing anymore, really. I, I don't have time to mess around. Twitter, I find uh, I end up doom scrolling. Does anyone else did some doom scrolling on Twitter the last few? Uh... <laughs> You'd insist on being buried with a joystick, Sam. I don't know if they're that good. They'll be OK. I, I, I think this is a really good start, though, because for me to now have a workable joystick model, I right? forget this quick joy shape now. I know the parameters now for the uh, Sanwa type sticks. I know the, the, the nice way of fitting those knob ends in, the, the push button thingies, fire buttons, triggers. 
I'll be able to now make all sorts of weird shaped joysticks. I'm, I'm thinking of a two-handed joystick. I think that's the, the next one. 5 a.m. stream. Should we, we'll keep going, shall we, Rob? We've got another four hours for this. That's absolutely fine. Okay, okay. I'm here all night. No bends. No bends. All right. All right, no bends. How do I, how do, I do this? Oh, here we go. Look, there we go. Oh, apparently my battery's about to run out as well. Who would have thunk it? So, where am I looking? Where's the camera hole on this? There it is. <laughs> That's better. Well, what can I say? Thank you very much for joining me on this impromptu stream about the joystick. And stay, uh, stay happy if you're going to be getting to work tomorrow. If not, stay safe. Um, and of course, look me up on Discord to see what's going on with this build. <laughs> yeah. By the way, that is silkscreen. I made a bunch of t-shirts using silkscreen. And uh, while I still had some ink on the screen, I held it up to the door and went slop. And it was okay. I got a bit of bleed through there because the wood doesn't sink. It's, not, it's, it's kind of an ink, not a paint. So it didn't sink into the wood nicely. It's a bit damp. But there you go. As ever, everybody, thank you for watching. Night.